Hello, hello. In this video, I'm showing you how I use uh, Posca Pen to create some hand drawn greeting cards or postcards, whichever you want to call it. Uh, I am using two types of paper here that are already in postcard greeting card sizes. One is textured, one is smooth type of paper, and I have my Posca pens. You don't have to use Posca pens if you're following this uh, video. You can use watercolor color pencils, whichever medium that suits you. Yeah, I chose Posca pens because it's a material that I want to experiment with. So before starting, um, I sketched out a few ideas that I have, and as you can see, I drew about eight sketches. And these sketches are quick. Uh, they're not precise. They're just meant to give, uh, to remind me about how certain things will be placed, how certain elements will be here and there. So it's like a very simple, sketchy reference for me. And um, out of these eight, I chose three. The first one being like a seamless pattern kind. Second one is um, some florals popping out from the edge of the paper. And the third one is like a repetition uh, icon that is at the, towards the edge of the frame. That is lined up against the edge of the frame. So it look edge of the frame. So the third one is some repetition of floral and shapes that are lined up against the edge of the paper so that it forms like a like a frame and here i'm just redrawing all the the, the three designs that i have uh, that i have chosen or to go with and to draw out a bit more details of the things that i want to draw so like the first one which is a repetition of flora and shapes here i am trying to choose what kind of icons or what kind of shapes I want it to be and pre-drawing it out or sketching it out helps me to visualize the sizes and maybe the direction of uh, how I want it to be drawn. So this is a good practice. Uh, I think a lot of um, artists that, you, I don't know, whoever you follow they they do have this practice which is which is a good habit which is to draw out what you visualize i mean you don't have to it's not a must but i find that it is helpful for me and one thing about uh, having all these sketches on hand is that sometimes when you're out of ideas you can just flip through what are some of the sketches you made and then you know sometimes new ideas will come up from it so yeah it's a good habit. For the first design, I will be recording in uh, real time, so I won't speed up certain things. Uh, everything will be in the actual time that I was drawing, but the second and third design, just so that the video doesn't get too lengthy, I will speed up at certain points. Um, I don't want to discuss too much about how I came up with the ideas but this is just some sketches and more importantly is deciding like colors or maybe some of the forms that I want to incorporate in into the, the design the drawing I keep saying design because <laughs> technically if you want to get fancy terms I'm not sure what the term is but I see it as a design Maybe it's the graphic design background that I have that I see everything as a design, but ideas, whatever you want to say, you want to call it, fine, I'll just call it design because it's natural to me, okay? Also because I have two types of paper, one that is textured, textured, one is smooth, uh, I have to decide which would probably go well with the type of paper. It's not, it's not a big thing, but um, 
yeah, I would think that the second design would suit the textured paper more. So for this project, <laughs> or for this, uh, this drawing, I just need two materials, which is one is the paper, one is... I just need two types of materials, which are paper and my Posca pen. Or if you don't want to use Posca pen, you can use your watercolor, your color pencil, your crayon, your pastel um, chalk, whichever you want. Okay? And when you have those two, you are good to go. So this video is also recorded. Um, the purpose is you can use it like a draw with me type of video. But what is intended is to explain certain... Um, certain processes that takes place when when I draw. I'm not sure about other, other artists, but for me personally, before I start drawing something else, I or before I start anything that is of visual, I need to pre-plan and you generate ideas, you brainstorm what are some of the things that you want or uh, what kind of color, what's the concept that you're going with, uh, which is uh, something that we learn, I learn in university. I'm not sure whether it is natural for all the artists, but this is what I do. And then in terms of colors, so here I am contemplating between two types, uh, two palettes. One is a mix of warm and cool. One is more towards uh, cool colors, right? But for cool colors, generally, if we see cool colors, it gives you a very chill, uh, relaxed vibe. Whereas the, the reddish tone and the greenish tone, what is the exact? name of the color i am not sure i think one is aqua green one is pastel red i, I don't know okay well, it's okay yeah but the complementary colors are because one is from a red background family red family one is of a green family uh, you can argue color studies with me i am not sure but <laughs> this is how i interpret that color one is from a red background one is from a green background. And red and green, if you look at the color wheel, they are complementary colors. And complementary colors means that they are complementary. <laughs> I'm not sure what is the exact term for it. But what I learned is that colors that are complementary, they, uh, they suit each other. They bring each other out. So it goes well with each other. That's basically what I'm trying to say. I'm a bit long-winded, but it's okay. I just want to explain that to you. Thank you. One thing about the first design is that um, I, I'm not too particular about having even space between the flowers. So some may look small, some may look big, uh, but it's okay. That's the beauty of that design. It is only natural that you have this kind of unevenness because this is a hand-drawn uh, hand piece. Of course, if you want it to be perfect, evenly spaced, the flowers are evenly shaped, even sizes, it's fine. But for me personally, this is what I like. And it, the imperfectness gives a very homey feel. Can I say that? Homey feel that, you know, this is something that is handmade. That There is that sincerity in it. Of course, I don't do it purposely, but I mean, I am... I'm not at that stage where I can evenly draw all flowers at, uh, in the same size, in the same shape. Which is fine, I feel. Here, I'm drawing like a six petal kind of flower. But, you know, this is a flower that I uh, am comfortable to draw with. 
So if you have another type of flower in mind, or you don't like this type of flower, it's up to you. In fact, you can draw whatever you want. But the point is, there is two types, or two different forms, and you want to be repeating these two different forms to show. Um, now, what is this design principle? Repetition, rhythm, one of it. I learned the design principle in university. I think it is called rhythm or repetition. Oh. I don't want it. Okay. Okay, so now uh, after drawing the flowers, I'm gonna draw the leaves using the shade of green that I have. For the leaves, uh, I'm gonna... I alternated between the direction that the leaves were facing. In fact, some had more than one leaves. So... It's okay, right? Why am I seeking assurance? <laughs> so yeah, um, it's fine to you know, spice things up a bit. I'm, I I know I mentioned repetition, but yeah, because they they do tentatively look similar. So it doesn't look like they're out of place or they don't belong. For this one, it makes sense that flowers and leaves go together. So, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to draw flowers and leaves, you are free to draw whatever you want. And looking at it now, hmm, I think here I was deciding whether should I color the leaves or should I just leave them as lines, sort of like outline of a leaf. And I think I decided to color the leaves just so that there is that sense of like a block color so it doesn't look too empty because like the flowers there were a lot of um there were a lot of lines in one flower because i was drawing at least six petals in one flower whereas the leaves it is just kind of look empty because there was just two lines so that's why i decided to color the leaves and it looks pretty good i should I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing about postcard pens is you need to be careful for it to dry before touching the paper. I think later on in one of the designs or one of the drawing, you would see the smudges. <laughs> I forgot to check out whether it was dry or not. So it's done. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to touch the paper. Because I'm not sure whether it has dried. But yeah, this is the first one. And in the middle, you can write or draw whatever you want. But this is just like the frame of the postcard. Like a decorating element. Yeah. It's good! It looks good! I'm satisfied. And for the second one. Right here, I'm just uh, picking my postcard pens. Yeah, for uh, this one, uh, I think I don't want to reuse the same colors as the first design, just so that, you know, I can try out other colors, other combinations. I struggle a bit with colors, so this is like a challenge for me anyways, and a practice it, you can say. Leaves 
and this will be uh, for the flowers yeah okay so this is my selection for the second design and second design will be on a textured paper which can be a bit tricky for Posca pants because I personally feel Posca pants are suitable for smooth paper um, textured paper sometimes creates a small friction with the nibs because if you look closely at the Posca pen nibs it is kind of canvasy like but if you're using other medium like color pencil or watercolor uh, no problem so before drawing I just test out and maybe try out a few flowers that I have in mind this is a good practice because um, you have a mental image of what kind of flowers you want to draw. space to write or draw something later on in the middle and um, because Posca pens are opaque so it's fine to start with the part of the flower that is at the back All right so I start with the stems sometimes with the leaves because they would dry first and I'll just draw um, like the, the flower buds above them so once the stems are dried, I will draw the leaves and whatever's in the bottom. I'll leave, usually I'll leave the flower buds last. So I start drawing leaves.
once I'm done, I just check and see whether I still want to touch up a bit more here and there. And as you, as I see here, it's a bit bare. So I think I will add a bit more of uh, maybe some leaves and just some flowers just to just to fill up that few uh, empty empty spaces. I think I'm satisfied with this second one. And for the third design, um, basically is uh, you need a theme, or an overall theme for uh, what you want to draw. So depending on what your theme is, if your theme is say, um, that's a good example. So besides birthday, maybe like a thank you note. So if it's a thank you note kind of card, thank you note, thank you card, then uh, what do you associate thank you with? So maybe gratitude, gratitude, thankfulness, uh, uh, present maybe, or you you show your gratitude by um, treating someone to a meal. So maybe you can draw desserts or a burger, food, coffee, tea biscuits, cookies, and whatnot. selected is a birthday and therefore the things that I draw are things that we can associate um, to birthdays, dinner or birthday parties and whatnot. Yeah. But basically <clears throat> what you want to draw is things that you can associate it with the the theme of the card that you're going for. And then so once you have your theme you draw it out and here I am just uh, trying to fill up certain gaps that I think that I don't want them to be there. It's fine having those empty spaces, right? You don't have to fill it up to the brim of the page. But for me personally, I like having um, as little space as possible without feeling, feeling like it's being crowded. So just adding dots here and there or some motifs, simple motifs, and that's about it. And so this is the third design. The feel of it. So these ideas are simple and easy to do. So I hope that um, hope that you can try this out with your children, your siblings, your parents, your friends, whoever that you, you want to have creative sessions with. So this is using postcard pens to create our own greeting or postcards. Hope you enjoy yourself. 